As always, if you haven't done so yet, pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this question is to calculate the total amount of charge on each of the two capacitors. Now we know that the amount of charge present on a capacitor is equal to its capacitance times the potential difference between the two plates of the capacitor. Now the question states the capacitances of both capacitors as well as the potential of the battery, which we can assume to be the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. So basically all we need to do is to plug into this equation and we'll be able to calculate the initial charge on each capacitor. And so by plugging in the known values, we can see that the initial charge on capacitor 1 is given right here, and then the initial charge on capacitor 2 is given right here. Next, the capacitors are connected so that the positive plate of capacitor 1 is directly connected to the negative plate of capacitor 2. Notice that they're also connected in a parallel arrangement. Now in this situation, the total amount of charge in the system is going to equal the charge on Q1 minus the charge on Q2. And the reason that we have to include a minus sign rather than a plus sign is because of the unique way in which they're connected, the positive plate connected to the negative plate. On the other hand, if the positive had been connected to the positive plate, then the total charge actually would have been Q1 plus Q2. But again, in this case, because we're connecting positive plate directly to negative plate, we actually have to subtract the charges. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in order to calculate the net charge on this system of capacitors. So when we plug in the value for Q1 and the value for Q2 and then subtract them, we can see that the net charge on this system of capacitors is 1 times 10 to the third microcoulombs. Now notice that because the capacitors are connected in parallel, that that means that the equivalent capacitance of these two capacitors is simply the sum of the individual capacitances. That's an overall rule that we would use for the equivalent capacitance of a parallel arrangement of capacitors. So we're going to calculate the equivalent capacitance of the system by simply summing the individual capacitances. And so we can see that the equivalent capacitance is 8 microfarads. Now that we have the equivalent capacitance as well as the net charge, we can actually determine the potential difference of this system of capacitors because we know that potential difference is equal to the net charge divided by the capacitance. Notice that we can leave the unit of charge as microcoulombs so long as the unit of capacitance is microfarads. And so when we divide this we can see that the potential difference of the new system of capacitors is 125 volts. Now again since the capacitors are in parallel that means that capacitor 1 has a potential difference of 125 volts and capacitor 2 also has a potential difference of 125 volts because parallel capacitors experience the same potential difference. So now that we have the potential difference as well as the capacitance for each capacitor, we can calculate the charge present on each capacitor. So we'll plug in the known values for each capacitor. We can see that the first one, Q1, turns out to be 750 microcoulombs. And if you were asked to convert that into millicoulombs, then you can just move the decimal over three places to the left. So that would give a value of 0.75 millicoulombs. So that's correct answer for capacitor one. And then for the other capacitor, we can see that we get 250 microcoulombs. And again, if we move the decimal over, we would get 0.25 millicoulombs. And so that would be the correct answer for the charge on the other capacitor. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for other videos. Remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.